Hey guys, we're uh, it's here Saturday. We're gonna um, load up this FB450 Holland thing, and then we're going to deliver it, bolt it down, and then me and Josh are gonna go deliver an HGS16E gun safe and deliver bolt that down, and then he'll get on with running some other calls. And if he needs help, I'll jump in a truck and go back him up. So uh, let's get this thing. Uh, Put these ninety pound moving blankets down. Sometimes we're in the house, we'll put them on the blanket so we can, we can pull a 600, 800 pound safe with it, just slide it along the blanket. So it works well. All right, we're pulling up to the house now to deliver the full, uh, first safe. It's the uh, FB450E uh, electronic keypad. Uh, it's fire and burglary safe. So we're gonna um, let's go inside here real quick, find out where the customer wants to put the safe and then bring it in and then bolt it down. Alright, so we got the safe in spot. We just need to uh, mark the hole, cut the carpet out, hammer it in, anchor it down. 
show them how to use the code, and then uh, we'll be getting out of here. Trying to get the anchor in the hole here. I'm using a three eighths inch anchor, five inch anchor. Sometimes use seven. It's in there. Feels like it is. You won't tap. Um, we're actually in between jobs right now. We delivered a safe this morning, and we're going to deliver this guy here in a couple minutes. But the customer wants a manual uh, dial on it. So what we're going to do is we're going to make two videos. One is how to swap out an electronic keypad and put a manual dial on. And the other is incorporating this into the video of leading from the front, which we're doing now. So uh, I'll go ahead and show you the whole process. and. Uh, We'll get started. All right. Okay, so first step is I gotta take off this inside panel, right? All these are different. This particular one here, um, if you pop these off, you got a little cap, those come off, and then behind it is a Phillips head. So all I'm gonna do is go behind these real quick and just pop them all off. And then we'll unscrew them all. And this is a HGS 16E. That's a 16 gun Halloween gun safe. It's a Hunter series, which is their entry, in, uh, entry level series. Um, even though they came out with a newer entry level series, which is called a Continental, but this is the traditional entry level series. Oh, the Continental series has some other safes that aren't just gun safes. So I would say this would be their entry level gun safe series, the Hunter series. Um, Actually, this customer is also going to buy a fire burglary rated safe from us, too. So we'll be delivering that and, and uh, also putting a manual dial on that for him, too. But we're going to do that in about another week or so. So it's been a busy Saturday so far. I think we've already delivered one safe. We're going to take this one and deliver this safe. And then we just sold another safe, Continental C36. All right, I got all the caps off. So all I'm going to do is just start screwing these. Shouldn't take very much. Keep that one tight. Get these off. It's basically just a screw with a little cap on it, and that cap has the, uh, this thing pops over the cap. Let's see, get that done. And that's sheetrock, what you're seeing. This board, this board right here is made out of sheetrock. Okay. All right. All right. Get 
it's not really a two-man job either. This is pretty easy. Um, it does take a Dremel, which I have the Dremel hooked up over here, because you have to custom cut down the, uh, what do they call it, the, the post, the, uh, I think it's the post. I'll show you how that works in a second. I'm just propping my foot so that all the weight doesn't just fall down once I take the screw out. Okay. And there we go. So, that's all it is. And there's your inner workings of the safe. Okay. Okay, so, here's your railing. You can see how it works. This is where uh, where this falls into place. It blocks the railing from moving. Okay, so we're going to take this off. This is your relocker pin. This is your relocker plate that's holding your relocker pin in place. So step one, let's do this. Step one, let's remove the relocker plate. And you might hear some back noise, background music, I mean noise in this video, but we're during normal operating hours, so it's to be expected. Okay, so there's your relock. Usually I pick this up and just kind of put it out of the way, because if that falls into that while this door is closed, then we got a problem. Then we have to attack it. I don't know if you can see this here, but there's the hardened steel plate is floating right behind this. So there's a hardened steel plate in there, which protects the lock pack from getting drilled. And this is the relocker, so whenever this was active and it's being held on by that plate that's on the back of the safe, and then someone tries from the outside hammering this body off and they knock it off, well, this plate's going with it. And then what would happen is that would fall back into that railing and then you're not able to get in. So that's what the relocker does. I wish I could put that out of the way for now. Okay. All right, next step, disconnect. That's where the electronic keypad engages it, a short little safe screws. Most customers like the electronic keypads for, you know, for quick access and, but some people like the old reliable mechanical. That's interesting. I never had that happen before. I'm not sure how you're going to get that through there. <laughs> okay. Maybe I have to take off the face plate. Interesting. Yeah, it usually you can pull this cable right through there, but this particular one doesn't go. This is a Sergeant Greenleaf electronic keypad. Okay, so just trying to pop this cap off here, so hopefully I can get this wire out of it. Usually it just pulls right through, like I said, but there's always something different. Yeah, even then you can't just pull it through. It's really strange. <laughs> oh, I bet you it's a small end on the other side. I didn't think about that. We're always learning new things in this job. There's always different variations of something that you haven't seen. We've been doing this nearly 15 years. And always something different. Screw that back in. I'll let that hang right there for a second. On the outside here. Battery. I can't remember which way these guys go. It either pops up or over. There it goes. Oh, there it fell off. So yeah, that was it. It basically has a little clip on the inside. So this will come out through here if I wanted to. There we go. There's your lock pack, all right? Keypad, and then the wire that goes through the door that communicates with it basically. 
not much to electronic keypad. But so, well, it depends, I guess. And then, like I said, your uh, hardened steel plate. Let me see if I can get it to slide out. It's rare we can show you things like this, so might as well make the best out of it. your hardened steel plate. All right, we have special drill bits to get through these, and when you're trying to get through these, it, it, they're a pain in the butt. You're literally shaving off like a piece of paper every so many turns. You'll see just a little bit come through. Sometimes it's taking two hours to get through these plates, and if your hole's off by just a small amount and you're trying to drill in the safe for getting it for a customer for some reason, you can't just widen the hole because it's hardened steel. You have to make a whole new hole. So these are really good. Back where it was. Cool. There you go. All right. So as of now, we have. I'm going to take off these two. There's two screws on the outside of the safe. I'm just going to take them off. They're the mounting screws for the body. Perfect. So now we've got nothing on the outside. All right. Yeah, not much going on the inside right now. The bones freely flow. Okay, so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to install this this manual. It's a Lagarde um, dial. You have this is the actual dial, the spindle, and then you have the little plate that goes around that. And you always have a lock pack. This one's a, instead of a, a latch style like that, this is a dead a bolt. So it's a the bolt throws. All right. Okay. What we got in here is an Allen wrench. I mean, not an Allen wrench, sorry. The combination setting tool. These are tools that uh, change safe combinations. Definitely keep those every time. Those are invaluable. Oh, we're always needing those kind of tools. Okay, so it gave me these. Yeah, it gave me these four screws to mount, and these for the face. And then on top of it, this is what's called a, a spline. I'll show you what that's for in a little bit. Put that out of the way. Okay, so. There's custom work that needs to be done whenever you're doing a manual safe dial because eventually I'm going to have to cut this down to the size because different safes, different thicknesses of doors and things like that. So uh, that will eventually have to cut down. Okay, so let's do step one. Step one, let's mount the lock pack. So what I'm going to do is take the back cover off this. Okay, so plate off the back of that. This is what you actually see here. So these are your, your wheels. And this is your um, actual, this is whenever, well, it's kind of hard to show you. There's a post in here. So you have all these wheels that are turning. And then when all the wheels line up correctly and to where all the, I guess the gap is, um, you have a fence that falls, that falls into it. And then whenever you turn the handle, it grabs it and turns the wheel. So when all the fences, all three of the fences line up, you could have different offsetting. They line up right, the fence will fall right into that crevice and then go grab and pull over. So that's the fence is on the edge of this, which you can't see it's behind there, but it pulls over all the wheels. Anyway, okay, so I'm gonna mount this on. Let's get the body mounted on first. So I'll cut it out. I guess I can mount those from the inside. Okay, so all those mount from the inside. Cool. So basically, straight up and down like this. Make sure these screws are the right size. Okay. Shorter ones. Okay. Yeah, so you got some longer screws and shorter screws. The shorter ones are going to go down here in the bottom corner because they don't have this whole spacer in between it. So the longer ones will go up here and there, shorter one there and there. So we'll put the first one on here. Okay. And if you're 
not a locksmith and you're trying to do this, just know there are there are a lot of variables that sometimes pop up. All safes have different, you know, everything's different. So not always different, but there are differences that come up and it's not always straightforward, I'll put it that way. There's a reason why you call them professionals, even though I can show you a how-to video, but in general how it works, this is how, it, how it's done. So short screws in the bottom. You can mess up the code while you're changing it or setting it, things like that. And then you gotta know what you gotta know how to read the wheels and everything when it goes back to normal. And if you lock it and you didn't do it right and you're locked out of the safe, then you're ready to drill into your brand new safe. Okay, so there's your uh, lock pack is uh, established, sorry. Next thing is this ring's angled outside. It's gonna be like that, right? And then I'm gonna need to mount on with two screws there. So let me get this plate in first. Always do it with the bolts thrown out too, in case the door closes behind you and then the relocker drops in and it's just in case, always prep for the worst. So let me get this here. I think it's these two screws. And you want your, you got your 12 o'clock mark and your 11 o'clock mark. Your 12 o'clock's for dialing your combination, your 11 o'clock's for when you're changing it. So you want that at the top, that 12 and 11. So put that through the hole. Okay. Sometimes you have issues like this where a screw feels like it won't screw in all the way or something along those lines. You may have to modify or use some different screws. So these are some of the things that could happen if you're trying to do it your own yourself and you don't have a bunch of spare parts from doing this for a living uh, you could end up causing some problems because if i keep tightening this right now i can tell the screw's going to break and then i've got a problem on my hands so let me take that screw out of there because that was not wanting to go in right i think i have one from the other one i might be able to use this little guy so here's a self tap let me try this guy i'm trying to do it to get it to stay on the safe and not mess up That's good. I need to loosen it. It's not quite a 12. This one's doing the same thing, so I'm gonna try a different screw. Okay. Try this little guy, see if that'll hold it on. Yep, perfect. So that. So dial straight up the 12 o'clock markers at 12 o'clock, the 11's at 11. Next thing, there's the uh, dial. Okay, there's the outside. I'm holding that in spot from the, from the other side, so now, what I'm going to do on here, actually, before I do this, let me show you. I'm going to bring this up to the camera here real quick for you to see. I'll let you focus in on that and tell me when you can see those letters. Okay, so see how it says LH at the top, VU, RH, VD, all right? So that's left hand, right hand, vertical up, vertical down, okay? So this is going vertically down. The bolt is going vertical down. So... If you look here too, if you zoom in on this, I'm going to bring it over there for you. See that? Okay, see that little crevice right there? Well, whenever this gets in here, let me get this to the right position for you. Okay, you see how that little divot is lining up with each different marker? So right there, whenever I get it to the right position, which this one's in a vertical down position, I would look at the VD, which is vertical down. I'd make sure that that slot lines up with it, which it is right there. And that's when your spline goes in a, in a position. So I would force that in there and it holds it the vertical down and that way it's timed correctly. Okay, so I'm gonna take that off. Okay. Oh, so I'm 
just going to spin this on. tighten it like right now see how it's getting there's no more no wiggle right if I tighten it down too tight then when I go spin the dial it's gonna be real tight so I want to get it to right around that sweet spot which is right in this area and then see how I can get it to line up for there but first I have to um, trim down the uh, neck of this guy or whatever you call it, the spindle okay so all I'm gonna do is basically mark it to where it's kind of flush with this little piece here. So I'm just going to put a little mark on there. Okay, so now Towards flush, so I basically just got to cut this down. You want to hold that? Okay, hold it right at that angle there. Just keep your eyes away from it. The safety All right. <clears throat> at first, I like to like outline what I'm gonna do. Spin it as I need it. I'm just making a little uh, divot for it to sit in so I can walk on it. Speed it up a little bit. Okay. You can't go back on this, so don't ever make sure you don't cut it too short. Yeah, a little hot. Should be able to probably hold it. Get a little... Try this one. There we go. That's probably 
fucking hot and they get that off the floor. Okay, so. Second safe delivery. We gotta pull this HDS 16E out and deliver and bolt it down. Okay, let's see here. Thank you. Some light there too, man. Yeah, I appreciate that. Hammering in the anchors now. This one wanted the customer wanted four anchors, so we're putting four in. And then uh, after this, uh, we're gonna get out of here, and then uh, that'll be it for the safe deliveries today. And we still have some more calls going, but that'll be it for the two safes. And so we finished uh, the second safe, delivering and bolting the safe down. So we are done for the day, and we're gonna wrap it up and just call it a day. So we appreciate you um, watching the videos. If you wouldn't mind hitting the subscribe button or hitting the like button also. And um, stay tuned for more content. We've got a new camera and new, uh, new mics and things like that. So our video uh, quality should go up. Also follow us on uh, tw uh, LinkedIn, Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, all the social media platforms. And we appreciate the support as always.